Okay, we've got a quorum, so I'm going to call to order the meeting of the Legislative Committee for Tuesday, February 14th. It is 1246. Um, roll call, please. I'm sorry. Roll call. <laughs> Good morning, Member Chaplin. Here. Member Childress. Yes. Chair Cesar. Here. Member Akaw? Here. Member Velasi? Here. Member Zay? Here. Okay, I move to approve the minutes of second. Tuesday, January 10th, 2023. I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, do we have public comment? None provided. We do not. All right, thank you. Okay. Chair's remarks? I don't have any chair's remarks. I made them already during our county board meeting, but I am going to introduce everybody to Bill Vidi. Bill? Welcome. He is our federal lobbyist. And Bill, you're meeting um, some Michael Childress, EDU, Carrie Galassi, our new board members who are joining us today. So these are folks you haven't met before. So welcome. And what's going on in Washington? Hey, uh, congratulations uh, to all of you for being on the legislative committee. And for those of you that are new, uh, congratulations as well. Um, thanks for having me here today. Always happy to talk to the board and, and um, you know, the more we can communicate, the better. Um, so uh, happy to talk about anything you guys want to, but I can give a little bit of an update. Um, you know, as you know, the House uh, flipped from Democratic control to Republican control, the Senate uh, re retained uh, in Democratic control, but increased its margin just slightly. Uh, so now they don't require um, the uh, vice president to break ties in the Senate. Uh, that being said, the margins in both chambers are incredibly close. And um, the administration, you know, obviously still controlled by um, um, the, the president, uh, Democratic controlled. So that this is sort of a long way to say that anything that gets done this legislative year is going to require um, some degree of consensus. You know, you obviously hear about uh, in, in uh, cooperation between uh, both sides uh, of the political spectrum. Um, you're hearing a lot of talk about the debt limit needs to be increased. Uh, this is going to be one of the ma major tests, early major tests of this Congress uh, in this administration to see how well they'll be able to get things done or not get things done. Um, you know, you're seeing a lot of posturing now, a little bit of saber rattling, uh, but at the end of the day, that doesn't mean uh, nothing should be worrisome, um, but what you're definitely seeing is some positioning. And, the, you, you know, a lot of people in Washington are predict, projecting that uh, the debt limit increase will be a bipartisan vote, uh, you know, in both chambers, um, because the, the consequences of not... Uh, raising the debt limit are, are so significant that, that no, no one really wants to get to that point where Republicans are asking for, they're asking really, uh, if you boil it down for some process changes and how we uh, move forward on the debt limit. There'll be a number of uh, significant pieces of legislation that will need to pass this year. Um, as always, the annual appropriations bills uh, often interchanged with the budget. I don't want to be too elementary, uh, but for those of you that are new uh, to this process, we talk about the budget, which they could be referring to the president's budget, uh, which is um, in many cases, many it's sort of a guideline or a framework or, or an outline of whatever administration's priorities. And, and they t that's a, sort of a, a guidebook, let's say. Uh, there's also the actual budget process, which are non-binding resolutions, both by the House and the Senate. But when we really talk about the budget, most people are really talking about the appropriations process, because this is done by the Appropriations Committee. You're fortunate that, you know, with Lauren Underwood, with Senator Durbin, that you have uh, Mike Quigley, you're well re represented in DuPage County uh, by members on the House Appropriations Committee. This is, uh, for by DC standards, the check writing committee. Uh, so they're actually in charge of, uh, you know, making the dollars actually work. Um, not to be confused with authorization, which is just sort of a, a uh, framework 
um, appropriators actually have to spend the money and, and figure out how we're going to make those dollars practically work. Um, the county's done pretty well under these, uh, you know, with our delegation. You know, a couple of years ago, they started something called community funding projects. Previously, they were just called earmarks. Uh, the terms used interchangeably. Um, and we'll see, you know, another process for earmarks to continue. Three quarter, and a lot, of, there were some questions about whether we would have earmarks uh, or at all going in this year because Republicans historically uh, have had some opposition, uh, but it was re reaffirmed uh, this year by three quarters of the Republicans in the House that they are going to retain the community funding earmark process going forward. So uh, this is the opportunity for us, and we've been successful on a number of very specific projects, um, you know, uh, that that we've worked on for the county. And this is direct dollars from the federal government to the county. Think of in term, it's a congressionally directed grant. Uh, also the appropriations process is where we have, you know, the uh, community development block, grant, block grants, which are very important to the county. A number of other programs that we care about are all funded through uh, the appropriations process. So uh, we have the, the, another big bill that you'll hear about is the FAA reauthorization bill. Uh, this is important because every airport, including the DuPage County Airport Authority, uh, receives funding uh, for various programs. Uh, we'll see the Farm Bill reauthorization. And why, we, why do we need to think about this uh, being in, uh, you know, I grew up in DuPage County and there weren't a lot of farms then. I'm not sure that there are any left today. Maybe, the, maybe there are. But, um, uh, you know, this is where, think of it sort of the child nutrition programs, uh, the free and reduced lunch, um, a lot of these programs all get funded and authorized through the Farm Bill. So these are the big things that Congress is going to be working on this year. Uh, we'll probably be primarily focused on uh, a number of our formula programs that we receive through the appropriations process. Uh, there are a number of other items that you, know, you, you all laid out in your uh, federal priorities that we'll continue to push. Uh, either for authorization or funding and in the mechanisms going forward. So um, I know these committee meetings run short, um, but again, congratulations. Uh, very proud to represent the county. As I said, I grew up there. And so it's a great pleasure to, to have the opportunity to be out here uh, before you in Washington. Um, one last thing that we, I should mention, there was all the money that was appropriated in one of the various stimulus bills, whether it's IIJA, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill. We're still uh, work with the county a lot and, we'll, and the administration's still working on getting these dollars out of the door. And so um, making sure that the county is, you know, compliant and getting its share of these resources and, uh, you know, not, you know, maybe our share and a little bit of somebody else's. Uh, one of my colleagues always likes to joke, uh, we don't want to be too greedy, but uh, we always want to make sure that we're at least getting our fair share. So um, these are more implementations, more agency actions. Uh, some of it will be congressional. And then... Um, you know, presume you all know uh, with the uh, COVID emergency expiring on May 11th, uh, that'll impact some changes uh, in terms of funding, in terms of uh, federal government regulations that will impact, you know, not just the county, but, but folks around the country. So I'll stop there. I'm happy to answer any questions. I know that was very quick, uh, pretty high level. Uh, I would be happy to go through more detail uh, uh, at, at another point when you all have more time, but would, would love to make sure I'm answering the questions you all have and, and looking forward to hosting you all out here in DC and, and doing some meetings on the county's priorities. Thank you so much, Bill, I really appreciate it. Before we go much farther though, I did wanna ask about that May um, deadline to end the emergency. And I know a lot of people are so excited to have the COVID emergency over, but I, th I see that as a negative, correct me if I'm wrong, because the COVID emergency will be over in May, doesn't that mean that's going to dry up all the federal funds for the COVID vaccines and the COVID um, testing? So uh, yes, out of pocket yes. or insurance fees instead? Yeah, that is correct. So if you want your free tests, uh, get them now. And, and that is actually a very important point. Uh, no more free tests. Uh, so this is actually a pretty significant thing. Also, it'll change the, you know, the way some of these dollars are flowing because there's no longer an emergency. So uh, definitely something uh, I would highlight to your constituents and, and you all want to be aware of. 
Thank you. Member Childress. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, but I had two questions now. Um, first goes back to the COVID. Does that, or does our legislative branch know that what they're doing is affecting the poor because people with insurance will get tested, but the poor that, that, that you don't have a job, you don't have insurance, you don't have anything, they won't get tested. And it's not like they live in a vacuum where they won't go out and affect other people. So this doesn't, it doesn't really make sense to me, but what are we, uh, is anyone speaking on behalf of that? At that so this actually isn't a legislative action. It is actually the president uh, that determined, made that determination to end the COVID emergency on May 11th. Uh, it's an executive action. So it's really at the sole discretion of the administration. There are people in Congress that certainly are weighing in and, and concerned that, that it's ending. Uh, there are people that are weighing in because they're concerned about the funding, uh, some of the funding drying up. But uh, this is a pretty uh, well uh, discussed item within the administration but really, um, you know, it, it would take a presidential action to, to delay it at this point. Okay. It's, 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 his, it's, it's his whole, ultimately with input from his advisors and, and there is a process, but ultimately is it is his discretion. A, a friend of mine um, thought he was exposed to uh, COVID and went to one pharmacy and they, they were gonna be charged $40. It's like, I'm not gonna be tested at $40. Then he went to another pharmacy that told him that um, it was covered by insurance. So you're right, are poor people gonna spend $40 to be tested? No, they're they're not. not. Right. They're not. Other questions for Bill Viney? I had one more question. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. The, the, the next question has some, nothing to do with that, but the next question is, the longer we delay the um, uh, debt um, ceiling, bill, the debt ceiling, does that cost us any money? As you know, the country, which eventually affects the counties, is that going to cost us more money the longer we delay, even if it gets passed? So what what's happened now is uh, the Treasury has something that is called emergency measures. Mm -hmm. um, don't ask me to explain it. I'm not sure I could do a very good job, uh, but basically uh, the Treasury Department can start playing with its books a little bit. And they actually have a pretty uh, good idea of when they run out of borrowing a pow power. And so with the, we haven't hit that date. And right now people are saying that date is going to expire sometime you know, early summer. Uh, where their emergency measures will run out. Um, and so what it really does, if we were to default for any length of time, right, it would affect the country's credit rating, which would just increase the rate at which we borrow money. So uh, we still have some time before we run out. Um, but what you also find is with Treasury, that date, it, it, I don't want to say it's arbitrary because it's not arbitrary. There is some flexibility on those dates. So, uh, but yes, your, 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 your assumption is right that if we were to go, you know, a couple of months without uh, borrowing authority, potentially that could uh, make it more expensive for the federal government. But um, the other piece of this is there's some debate over whether we can prioritize payments. And, um, and, and that may be something that would uh, give more, um, you know, sort of, even if we were to default at some point, give more to uh, more time to come up with a final resol resolution. Um, but right now, again, there's a lot of posturing, there's a lot of language uh, back and forth, and uh, Congress is not very proactive. It's good at being reactive. And so, well, uh, the Treasury Department has put out its date and now it's employing extraordinary measures. Um, Congress really oftentimes doesn't act until the last minute, unfortunately, uh, but is the reality of our system. Uh, so, but yes, your, the answer to your question is yes, if it were to go on a long time, would, would definitely impact uh, the federal government. One of the things though, that I would keep you in, in, in mind of and this is where you're definitely going to see some changes is 
There are other than appropriations bills, which have to be passed every year. The federal government, we have an annual appropriation cycle, annual budgeting cycle. I know some states, and I, I don't recall if Illinois is a biannual cycle or not, um, but we, we do on an annual cycle. Uh, there are no big spending packages coming up. You know, some could argue the farm bill, some could argue the FAA reauthorization bill, but there is no bipartisan infrastructure bill, IAJ, nothing like that on the horizon, barring some uh, significant cat catastrophe. So that, in a sense, is something we need to keep in mind that, um, you know, the last few years, we've seen unprecedented level, unprecedented levels of federal funding of uh, flowing out to the local communities. And there isn't another package that's slated to move like that uh, this year. Other questions? Member Rickoff. I, no, I just had a question about the National Flood Insurance Program. Yes, sir. On our legislative agenda. When uh, I went out to NACO with Jim Healy, we'd sit in a couple meetings where there seemed to be a big debate between uh, whether or not people who have reoccurring floods, like along the Mississippi or something, should move, or whether or not those homes should be repaired repeatedly uh, through insurance. And it seems like since the bill in Washington has been only passed incrementally, that maybe they, they came around to saying, hey, these people should move. And I, I didn't know if there was a resolution to that debate or no, but there will be. And again, just speculating, I suspect that uh, most people aren't going to be forced to move. But again, I'm trying to I'm trying to make an educated guess. I mean, this is not a new debate, uh, but uh, generally uh, the, the, the side of people having to, to leave their homes um, generally wins out on this. Multiple repairs to the same property. Yeah. And then the, the other factor was that lots of times state legislators change the insurance laws uh, regarding who's covered and who's not covered. And then that forces insurance companies to make a decision to stay or leave the state. And oftentimes they leave the state. And I just didn't know if that had happened in Illinois or other parts of the country or so Florida would be, I don't know about Illinois, but Florida would be the prime example of where insurance carriers have essentially left the state. And uh, Florida actually has uh, its own, um, you know, insurance, flood insurance company, which is woefully underfunded, uh, candidly. Uh, so uh, Florida would be a, a prime example of, of where insurance companies have, have left. So then FEMA with federal money and tax money from Illinois taxpayers would be would go in there and start subsidizing or covering the Florida people. Uh, not in every case, no. Um, you know, for example, um, I'm not telling you anything you can't read on in the news because you've been pretty public. Senator Scott in the last uh, storm lost his house. Uh, he's responsible for 100 percent of those repairs. Mm -hmm because uh, you know he can't insure. And uh, so he's gonna ha have to cover. So not in every case uh, does FEMA cover everything um, on the personal side anyway. Some things, does it cover some things or just? I, I would have to get, I'll ha I'd have to get back to you to know uh, exactly what it covers and not, not doesn't cover because it doesn't cover every, every household item. I'd have to go back to you. Okay. Thank Do you. you have a house in Florida, Member Echo? <laughs> oh, my mother had a house in Venice. Uh, but she sold it to her sister. So. Member Deacon Garcia. Oh, no, I was just going to explain more about the CRS program and, and NFIP, but I think we we'll do that for another time. Okay. Any other <laughs> questions? Okay, Bill Viney, I want to say thank you so much because I know that you were ready to be on with us at our committee meeting at 1130 and our other meeting ran so long. So thank no you so much for hanging out with us. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, we'll get back to you again. Any final words? Uh, I'd love to see you all out in DC. I hope we'll have a few out of few of you out here sooner than later to, to walk around with the, the federal agenda. It's always helpful. Um, and uh, look forward to meeting as many of you in person a, a, as possible. Well, Bill, Thank I might have a so reason to go out now, so I might, uh, I might come out and see you. <laughs> would, would love to. <laughs> All right, thanks, Bill. We'll let you go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
So next we've got an action item and I got to move to uh, approve it and then somebody will second it. And then for discussion, we'll start with Cheryl to explain it to us. So right now I'll, I'll move to approve LEG-R-0035-23. The minutes, are we doing the minutes? Or we already did. Oh, we did? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. That. Okay, sorry. So I made the motion. Do I have a second? Okay, second by member Childress. All in favor? Oh, question. Well, all in favor? First? Oh, aye. Okay, all, no, no. all in favor. Let's just approve it for, or go no. through it first, motion right? Motion and second. Yes, and, and then discuss. Okay. Yeah. And we'll start with Cheryl. Yeah, I'll just go over the priority page. Um, that's okay with everyone. I'll just highlight the dot points and she can stop me. And, um, these are just um, ideas that either came from board members or from department heads. Um, you know, the federal agenda is a little bit different than the state because it's really hard to pass a bill in Congress. Uh, there's over 4,000 counties. So we work really closely with NACO, National Association of Counties. And we also work very closely. Bill does lobby our individual. I believe we have seven congressional members now because we picked up Chewy Garcia and uh, Dila Ramirez, who's new as well. We will be getting these lists out to you. Heidi worked very hard on our new federal and state um, delegation list because with the map, we had to go back to GIS a few times. We forgot some people. So I think we're at 27 state legislators and we used to have 22. Wait, are there emails and phone numbers on there too? Yeah, perfect. We're missing a few for some new members, but she's been on it. <laughs> she has called their spouses. She has gotten this information. So <laughs> Heidi does not give up. Uh, but these lists are very important. Um, so I think, as Bill mentioned, one of the biggest ways the county receives money is through our community development mm -hmm. programs for you that, that are been on the CDC for years. We, the county receives a lot of funding under community development block grant, the home program, emergency solutions grant, LIHEAP, weatherization. There was a new program that was started last year, the low income household water assistance program which the county's assisted over 1,500 um, individuals uh, with their sewer and water bills, and of course the community services block grant. So actually 20 years ago, the county received more, funny, more money in CDBG and home than we do today, which I highlighted um, in the text. So there haven't been cuts lately, but we still are way down. In 2003, the county received 5 million in CDBG. Last year was 3.7 million. Uh, similar, uh, similar to that in uh, 2003, they, oh, two, yeah, 2003, the county received 2.7 million at home, and last year they received 1.9. So this is a major topic that Bill is always um, going to our congressional delegation to work on. Uh, the second item, as, when COVID started, they did expand eligibility for the Community Services Block Grant Program. That's a program that our Community Services Department administers just to help with um, basic needs, keeping people out of poverty, whether it's short-term housing, food, clothes, different necessities. They were, the federal government did extend from 125% to 200% of the federal poverty level, the guidelines to be eligible for the Community Services Block Grant, but it's temporary. So this year we wanna try and make sure it stays with, as the chair pointed out, May 11th, COVID coming off. I don't know if they're gonna continue it, that's something our community services department, you know, helps an additional 100,000 families in DuPage. So that's very important to keep that at 200%. Um, a former board member uh, asked that the county continue to push the federal government to provide um, insurance protection for children with autism. Right now, the federal government regulates ERISA plans. Those are larger corporations that administer their own health insurance plans. And those uh, plans do not mandate autism treatments. So right now, about four in 10 children do not have mandated autism treatments. They might have them depending on the policy, but it's not mandated. So that's something uh, I was asked to put in here that I believe the board supports. <laughs> um, behavioral and mental health that's becoming, continues to be a a very significant issue. Mm -hmm. Actually, NACO, and I can send it to you, but I pretty much reprinted it. NACO has been lobbying Congress for some time now on five specific priorities. And one of them right now, if you're a, a county or state jail inmate, you do not qualify for Medicaid. 
So the county spends over a million dollars a year on health care for our prisoners. And a portion of that is mental health care. Mm -hmm. They do have a psychologist and a psychiatrist psychiatrist and a psychologist on contract, but we can't even approach that subject right now. So that's something we want to change. Um, also, larger psychiatric treatment facilities do not qualify for Medicaid. Uh, we had in our state agenda trying to incentivize and figure out a way to uh, increase and retain people in the behavioral workforce, all for different types of, you know, mental health professionals. There's a huge shortage here and struggling, you know, across the street, the health department to hire individuals that want to enter that field. So that's also a concern at the federal government. And then some other issues, there aren't really a crisis overnight uh, response rate in place to be reimbursed. Um, the 988 National Suicide Prevention Lifeline that went live, but there's no funding that came with it. So again, that's a county responsibility. So they have a very aggressive mental health package that Bill will be talking to our delegation about. Um, keeping our community safe. Um, I was asked to put in a request for a federal ban on assault weapons and high capacity ammunition magazines. As you know, there was a 10 year ban that expired, I think in 1994. Um, so that is in there. Uh, I talked with Lisa Chavak from Workforce Development and there have been instances where dollars have been returned, not a lot to the federal government, but because there's so many barriers to using these funds, especially with our youth, a lot of schools do not have the ability to meet the requirements for some of these programs and neither does our staff. And so I really wanna have some conversations and if whenever you wanna go to DC, Bill Viney will set up meetings for you, you know, on the Hill, because something like this workforce development package, we really need to spend some time mm -hmm. going over the details. I mean, this is hard to really address in legislation. It's really working um, with the federal agencies. You know, they require a student assessment. We already do student assessments and to require a whole other level. A lot of schools just say we're not interested. And so it's really hard to get a lot of at-risk youth into some of these job training programs. So we just listed some examples that uh, Lisa was kind enough to give me, but that's a topic we want to try and work on as much we can. Um, ARPA is something that NACO has talked about. And even though the county board has done a really good job of distributing funds, as we know, a majority of the ARPA dollars are going to long-term capital projects, mm -hmm. whether that's the renovation of the care center rooms, you know, building the central receiving center, and it's going to take time to get it done. And right now you have to have the funds obligated by 24, but you also have to have them spent by 26, which seems like a long time away, but with the care center, we can only do a wing at a time. It's going to be a four-year project when you look at supply chain and all these other problems, labor, you could easily go over 26 and have, I don't know, we won't lose money, but we're going to be scrambling to redirect them. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy as the CARES Act. So if we could get another year on either end, as Bill said, between CARES Act, ARPA, and the infrastructure bill, we're not going to see any more major federal funding for years right. because of the debt. So if we could extend the timeline, and I know the board has talked about what if we have COVID-24, what if we, this was like your only pot of money, federal money. Right. So I don't know if they would extend the deadline, but we're not asking for more money. We're just asking to extend the deadline. So that's something we want to talk about. Um, the National Flood Insurance Program, Stormwater asked me to keep this in here. They do continue to renew it, but they only do it on a 12 month basis. And this is the one program that provides, you know, accessible and affordable insurance coverage for our residents. I think we have, I don't know, maybe over five, 6,000 people on flood insurance in the county. I'm not sure yeah. um, the number, but it's important to sustain that for the whole country, obviously. Um, and they would like to see it on an annual, I mean, on a permanent basis instead of just every year, because then it becomes in jeopardy. I was trying to figure out when I talked to Bill Viney, it seems like this contradicts our stormwater position because this allows people to remain in the flood zone. There's no, we require people to either, you can't build in one. And when, if you're one, in we have one, a voluntary buyout list. And then we got a voluntary buyout list, but we don't. But our mapping has taken a lot of people out with our 
projects and municipality projects there when we redo our mapping we've taken a lot of houses out of the plan. my wife's third story condo got put into one one time with the door remap let's let um let's let cheryl finish her presentation and then we can move on to questions it's fine um yeah just two more left um protect our environment uh the county for many years has worked um member chaplain has to try and support legislation that addresses climate change. I know this year in particular in Springfield, we're really working on trying to reduce the amount of waste that is put in our landfills through the packaging and you know different types of legislation. Um, so that's in the uh, agenda. We're, we really, something like climate change and reducing our carbon footprint, we really need to work with NACO on. And I know they have a lot of subcommittees that address climate change, but Bill will be talking to our delegation about supporting those bills. And then lastly, um, actually the farm bill is where um, the humane treatment of our animal population will um, fall. Uh, Congressman Krishnamurthy, as maybe some of you know, he was here um, mm -hmm. pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. We did a ceremony with him and he's going to reintroduce a bill in the next couple of weeks. Um, USDA has lax is not even, that's not even a fair term. They have zero enforcement of animal welfare standards at the federal level. Um, there's no transparency on the website. They don't do inspections. There's not enforcement. And this kind of leads to the puppy mill and the other mm -hmm. part, uh, uh, items we've talked about in this committee for a long time. But he is going to reintroduce a bill to try and have a better process for the licensure of animal dealers and exhibitors. Um, and penalties for, um, you know, uh, violation of animal welfare standards. So that's kind of our list of priorities. If you want to comment or change or. Okay, I okay. just want to take okay. questions and I know Member Chaplin was first. Thank you. So great legislative agenda. Um, I think we're doing a really good job. It was good to hear from Bill Viney. So just some um, comments on the agenda and just I had a couple maybe additions to add into it. So let me see. Okay, when we were talking about community um, service block grant. So if I remember right, we have a hard time. I think we've left money on the table for that too. Oh really? Okay, yeah. I'm not sure. So, and I don't know if it's a staffing issue that we have getting that money out, but I know it's been very difficult. So that's something that we need to look into to make sure that we're getting all of our community service block grant money out the door. This is coming on that. Um, and then, um, oh, so we have the workforce development services, which I think is great. Um, but can we add something in the agenda that talks about affordable housing, workforce housing, um, you know, making sure that those programs are still, um, you know, they're going to fund those through HUD or, you know, um, other incentives to have keep those tax credits for that type of thing. So we can add that in. I, I think that would be great. And then um, with the environmental um, aspect of it, uh, you know, we have a lot of aging infrastructure. So we have like water systems, <laughs> stormwater systems, maybe, right? I don't know about stormwater, but I know about regular water. Um, maybe we can encourage them to continue, you know, um, funding, um, aging infrastructure like the water the lead pipes and the infrastructure you know we have some aging um, community wells and other wells out here that may need um, to be replaced so that would be if we can add that to the environmental anybody doesn't have any uh, issues and that would be those would be my comments so thank you questions comments well, I just think the infrastructure bill will take care of I me mean, I think it will take okay. care of a lot of that okay I mean, a lot of that money was put in there for it so. okay I thought that's what it was just on page make sure 12. To make it a priority. Remember, I got page 12. Oh, covers what you just said. I might have missed it. Right. You know, the one thought that I had about this public safety, keeping your community safe, is that um, I'm not a gun person, but I know my dad and my brothers are big gun people, and I could even ask them about that. But I've heard comment about um, from those who are into guns that our terminology about assault weapons is off. And I'd like to make that more accurate because a knife is an assault weapon. This chair could be an assault weapon. You know, normal guns could be assault weapons, but I think the term is automatic weapons, not assault weapons. So I'd like to get a better definition of that. Should it be assault weapons? I mean, should it be uh, automatic weapons? I don't know. And, high I'm not a... and not assault weapons. You know, Jason, I don't know. Okay. 
I guess there is a distinction, uh, but I mean, automatic is the feeding of how it is. So there is a distinction. We, we can look into the, the specifics of how that is. I mean, this yeah. pen could be an assault weapon. And I just want to make sure we have our, yeah, our I mean, if, if you, semantics. Yeah, yeah, I know. You, you can broaden the definition that much, yes. The gentleman that spoke this morning from the, with the Marines hat that yeah. talked about the Armalite. Um, rifle. That's what it is. It, yeah, it, right. it, 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 and it's, it is used for hunting. So, but it, so when we're saying assault, we're, we're really, it is wrong that we're, yeah. that we're saying that it's a, and that it's a military weapon because it's not a military weapon either. Right. Just because I know, because I have a husband that's very much into guns. Um, and then, um, so, you know, making sure that we're getting that language correct so that people can't come and say you guys are wrong you don't know what you're talking right. about right exactly that's so, my point so if we can shore that up and um you know make sure that that's and that was a that was a manufacturer you know manufacturer that did these armor rifles and then people um other manufacturers started copying them right mm -hmm. and then maybe selling them for nefarious purposes or whatever but that's my understanding of it mm -hmm. so um well on that topic i just think that you know like the Second Amendment, if you if you shoot with somebody with a gun, you you've shot one person. But when you have these automatic weapons that go in and shoot multiple rounds in seconds, you can wipe out a classroom. And like, you can make any gun an automatic. automatic. I mean, there's all those devices, and that's why they were all banned in the legislation because you can turn any gun into a automatic gun that's going to shoot a lot of people in a short amount of time and do a lot. Of and damage. that's what we're against, right? That's right. Remember you? Thank you. Um, so yes, actually in the Protect Our Women's Communities Act, when they talk about assault weapons, they actually mm. define it and the definition is quite long actually. Mm. And what is um, you know, prohibited, they specifically talk about any ammunition um, that feeds, you know, I think it's 10 rounds or more. And that is really what we're trying to prevent, obviously. So um, I, I would say that we should take a look at the Protect Our Women's Communities Act in order to, to decide what to specifically include um, in our legislative priorities. Excellent. Jason, can we do that and get the definition? Of course, better? yeah. And, and to remember Hugh's point, I do know that the definition of the Protect Illinois Act is relatively lengthy, and it does define some of those aspects in regards to the feeding rate and of that nature. And we can look at some of the bills introduced in Congress. You're right. They just say assault, but you have to dig deeper and look at the definition. Yeah, and to, to that point, the federal level defining it is different from the state. I, I don't remember both of them off the top of my head, but I do know that we, we have to look at which level of government, how they're defining the state, state or federal or whatnot. Codes. Perfect. I just don't want people to think that we're ignorant about, ignorant about the um, what we're trying to say because we're using the word assault and that might not be the term we want to use. Okay. Other questions about the state of, or the federal agenda? Oh, I'm more. sorry. I'm going to call Sarah because I, I think this policy contradicts with our stormwater policy is because I think it allows people to rebuild in flood zones. I'm gonna find out. Well we, we have the chairman of stormwater right here. And then, no we don't allow well, we no, no I know we don't. I think this policy federal policy does. And the okay. uh, second thing is we'll talk about anyway if somebody could just give me the source material that they have for the for the uh, global warming and climate change on page 18. We got those stats. There's a lot of stamps that are not cited. To um, it's from Joy Hens. Can so, Joy ask her to send it to me now? So what does this mean, State's Attorney? I have a suggestion about the term assault. Member Chaplin has suggestions. Member Eckhoff has suggestions. What does this mean to our agenda? Can, can we approve this today and then amend? I don't think you can unless you have specific language you want to put in. Otherwise, you're kind of, you don't know what you're voting on. I think that would violate the Open Meetings Act if you're going to make an amendment, but you're not defining the change you're making or does the public know what you're voting on. So I, I think you should, if I were you, I would table it until your next meeting when you have your agenda where you can make your revisions. Can we meet next week in like a special call, even though we we meet we aren't necessarily tied to any specific date? But is there a time on Tuesday that we can meet? Didn't we, did we update the state's agenda during the meeting? We did. We did. We but did. did you have specific language, or did you have just general comments? Because what I've heard so far was we should change the definition of assault weapon. We should look to statute to see what it says. But I haven't heard. I want to add the following language into the agenda. I've heard some general ideas, just like I've heard, and I, forgive me, I'm trying to re recollect one of the other changes was you wanted to address the um, 
the, the lead pipe specifically and additional funding there. I would feel more comfortable if you had specific language that you were adding in, just so people know what you're voting on and what the actual agenda is. That's fair, and that's why you're the expert here. Can we vote on it. I would vote on it, and, and then bring language. Yeah, you can vote on it, and then on the floor, the, floor, the, the, floor the county the board. Weeks. That would be fine too, as long as you understand that what we're voting on doesn't have the amendments you discussed. And we have the amendments at county board. And then you we might have a time next Tuesday at 11, I think, because strategic planning was going to be on that now. So could you all meet at 11 next Tuesday? Say does want to. He's giving me a facial load. He's <laughs> taking back your candy. That's fine. <laughs> yes. The transportation of ten. Okay, can we meet at eleven uh, next week? Why don't we try? If not, I mean, I think well, what you got to get all that information to them by Thursday so they can. Right. So well, they can they're giving it. information to yeah, us. I'm just saying, right? we got it. It's not like we have like a lot of time. We have to. That's true. Well, well, a couple days. Just to, to narrow it down, we really need to. And again, we're not supporting a bill. No. It's more of a goal. So True. we can look at the definition of automatic or assault weapons and just clarify what each means. That doesn't mean you're signing off on a, there's so many bills in Congress. It's and, a little more. And this is very excellent suggestions as well. Again, you could do, you could do it as an, an amending it on the floor in county board, if that's what you want. If you want to have that discussion here, you, you should table it. If you want to have it at county board, that's fine as well. Okay, so I will table it until next Tuesday. I'm not looking to save space. <laughs> I, I make a motion to table it until our meeting, uh, special meeting next Tuesday. A second? You can you get off to second. Okay. Yeah. So second by Member then. Okay. And can I just clarify because I want to add a couple of sentences on lead pipes and the, that issue in the environmental mm -hmm. section. Um, we want to look at the definition of automatic or assault weapons and clarify that. And then the workforce housing and HUD, I don't know if I can get that in two days. I'm going to have to work with the housing authority. I don't know. That's not something we... May, may I one second with that? I know we'll have to post Thursday, obviously. Um, however, uh, technically it's a supplement of backup document. Uh, Mr. State's attorney, would it be acceptable, say Cheryl and I finish that on Friday, we can update said supplemental material. Oh, sure. As long as you have an agenda posted and as long as you're, you have the language ready to go to be approved as an amendment at the meeting. Yeah, so understand. what I would suggest at that point then is this gives Cheryl and I a little bit more flexibility and time. And even if we have to do some stuff this weekend, that's sure. fine. Um, but what we can do that is we can send out a, another final copy if we need to make a change to that and that buys us a little bit of time but we can ensure the agenda is posted at the appropriate time for the so opening. there was my assault language change there were your changes regarding um community services block grant workforce development re affordable housing and environmental and was there something else that we wanted to change remember echo yeah. Well, if I'm going to change it or not, because I want to read more about it. But I was going to say, I followed up with the mayor from Highland Park after she was here. Oh, yeah. I got some information from her about somebody who testified with her in D.C. who sent me her written comments. So I'm going to send those to Jason, because I think they will give you a better idea as to what an assault weapon is and is not. And then I also uh, contacted the state's attorney in McHenry County, because he just wrote an article or an opinion piece last Sunday about it. And it will show you about 60% of all the hand weapon crimes are with handguns, not assault weapons. So, Interesting. Okay, and you wanted to get some clarification about flood insurance. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll talk to Sarah about that. Is that it? Any other changes to that? The CSBG wasn't, it was just they thought they left money on the table, but there's nothing like to put in here for okay. CSBG. Perfect. Okay. Okay. I'll talk to Okay, Mary all in favor yeah. then, I move to table it. Till next Tuesday, Member Chaplin's or Member Childress second the tabling. All in favor of tabling till next week. Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. Um, old business, new business. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you so much. See you next week. Aye.